Welcome to Space Vidcast Episode 4. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. <laughs> yeah, throw, you always do something with the numbers in the beginning. Have you noticed do that? I? Yeah, every time. Well, when they're double digits, I'm going to have a harder time. <laughs> my name is Benjamin Higginbotham. I am the Space Geek. This is my beautiful, wonderful, and incredibly talented wife, Carrie Ann. Not a Space Geek. My job is to educate you as to why space is important in the future of humanity, as well as this one right here, because she just don't get it. Nope. Still, I haven't actually broken through that yet. Not quite, but I heard about living on uh, one of Mars' moons. Yeah. And how it takes just as much fuel for us to get to our moon as it does to get to that moon. Really? Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> sweet. Awesome. There's a cool little crater there and everything. Now we have got a freaking fantastic show for you. This this show is going to be scary good. Let me tell you what we've done. First off, we have flesh tone this one. <gasps> See that? Look at that. Actual color in our faces. The week, last show, we were white as a white as a sheet. Well, except for except for me, I really am that color. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But now you. you are. So anyhow, uh, so that's great. That's good news. So we're using a better camera. The second thing, we have all new audio. We have a director. K is directing the entire show. So instead of me doing this every thirty seconds, and kind of going like this, and I'm like we're making this. her do it. We're making her do that. Yeah. It's that's great. Awesome. So I can I can make contact with you, and uh, we have got a live guest on Skype who will be joining us for the second segment. But first, I think we need to cover some space news. Space news! Space news. We still don't have an open for that, Graphic. <sighs> All right. So, starting up, the Russian space shuttle has is sailing uh, the Rhine... It's the Rhine River. Did I pronounce that right? I, it's Rhine? German. I don't know. Someone help me. I, I think I got that right. Rhine. 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 Right, river. So here's a shot of it. it. This is their space shuttle. For not a lot of people know this, but the Russians actually built a space shuttle as well. And in my humble opinion, it was actually a better shuttle than the American shuttle. Ouch! It does look like ours, so do not be fooled. This really is one of theirs. Yep, yep. This it is the. Uh, it does help because in the picture, if I'm looking at this correctly, uh, to sail it up the river, they did take the wings off. Yeah, and the tail and a bunch of other. Well, things. yeah, but I mean. But uh, the cool thing about this shuttle is that it actually has jet engines on the back. Um, so it can actually do a little bit more than just the uh, the coasting flight that the U.S. space shuttle can do. Mm -hmm. And it didn't use a solid rocket booster. It used a liquid uh, right. engine to, to launch. There was only one launch of this particular shuttle, and it was... Um... 1988. Oh, wow. Look at you. Booyah, up... baby! Oh, up with the information. Look at you go. Dang. And uh, uh, it launched once, and it was a completely unmanned launch. Yeah, uh, that was one of the big... That's why they thought it was superior to ours, because it could go on autopilot. Yep. Which makes a lot of sense to me. It actually. even landed uh, into like a, a tailwind or a crosswind or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. Uh, much higher than even uh, the U.S. shuttle can land. So yep. a, a very cool very cool vehicle. Uh, too bad it didn't do much. Now, they are coming out with another vehicle, but we'll, that's one of those did you knows <gasps> that will be. Yes, a did you. You mean you have to pay attention to the show? You have to pay attention to the show or you're not going to know. And you have to read. There are <laughs> subtitles to our show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next news item, a new crew has taken charge of the space station. I'm sorry, space vidcasters. Peggy is leaving. Oh, Peggy. Yep. Peggy, Peggy we is... We love Peggy. Yeah, we love Peggy. Peggy Peggy's a lot of fun. It was a Russian cosmonaut who's taken over the, sh uh, the position. Do you have his name on there? I, I didn't bother to write that in down. in a second. Uh, but they're going to be leaving. Peggy also set a U.S. record for number of days in space. I believe it was just over a year. 374. Thank just you very over much. a year uh, days in space. That's a U.S. record. I believe the Russians actually hold the world record or galaxy record. Ooh, the galaxy record? I'm not sure. I'm sure there's somebody else in space who's like, screw you. I've been up here my whole life. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I don't know what you would call that record, but I believe the Russians had that with the Mir space station. And I also believe the Mir space station had a human on it for like 10 years. Wow. So we've got uh, got a long ways to go with the International Space Station. Wow. But yeah, no joke. That's uh, Zarek Volkov. There you go. Thank you. So Expedition so 17 Sorry. has relieved the Expedition 16 crew, and Peggy uh, will be coming home. Now, keep in mind, stay tuned to Space Vidcast. We're going to have coverage of the Expedition 17 crew coming home uh, when they air that live. Check spacevidcast.com slash calendar for that list of events. The time can change based on events, you know, solar winds, solar tornadoes, things like that. <laughs> what? Yeah, well, tornadoes? Yeah. Solar hurricanes. They're tornadoes no good. don't bother anyone. <laughs> There is a, uh, the company Spaceport uh, has launched a test of future spacecrafts. Yeah, this actually confused me to no end. I, I had That's to read great. this article like three times because I didn't understand the concept that Spaceport was a company. A company. Yep, not a port. So like, yeah, so like Spaceport 
I yeah, I don't know. I'm fairly it's I've been watching entirely too much like uh Stargate Atlantis or Stargate yep. or Earth Final Conflict or something where I was thinking, Hey, cool, there's a port now. <laughs> uh this is in New Mexico, by the way. And Lockheed Martin has been using it uh, with some of their less publicized technology, which I think is hysterical because their less publicized technology is now being publicized. But hey, you know, don't mind that. That's not a big deal. Uh, what Lockheed, though, is doing is that they have a spacecraft that they're flying, uh, and it's about one-fifth the size of what a future vehicle would be, uh, but it is not intended for human flight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's purely for, like, satellites and other things like that. Uh, but it's it's just to be an easier, faster way to get them up in the air, and, st and so I thought that was really kind of cool. Yeah, and they started testing of that this last yes, week. Yes, that's that's, that's kind of what this whole shebang is all about. Yes. Right. So that is news for this past week in space. Space news. Space. Uh, coming up next, we're going to have a live Skype interview with <gasps> the first chair of the Office of Tomorrow's Mars. There's I had, an office already for that? There, there is. Actually, this is going to be a fascinating interview. I have to get crowded. This is the essence of why Space Vidcast is here, so you guys stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. This segment is sponsored by Brain Tonic. Get rid of the head fog with zero caffeine or processed sugar. For more information, go to spacevidcast.com slash brain tonic. A new spacecraft. Wh what? Yeah, oh yeah. No, no, no. We already have enough. <laughs> we don't Actually, need any more. We have a picture of that. It's called the clip. The kip. Uh, help me out there. Kilper. Clipper. 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 Cl uh, go ahead. Let's. Uh, I think we have a shot of that. It's uh, called. I. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Oh, it's so cute. Yep. Pretty it's cool. It's a little baby one. <laughs> it's actually pretty big. No, so, it looks uh, like you can fit like two people in there. Yeah, but it is man. So anyhow, that's that's what they're working on. That's so cute. All right. Our uh, guest for today is, uh, his name is James Smith. He is with the Office of Tomorrow's Mars. He is the first chair. It almost sounds like a Disney title, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of, a little bit, actually, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, James, uh, welcome to the show. I hear you're having a little bit of uh, weather where you're at right now. Believe it or not, it's actually uh, completely gone away. Uh, oh, my gosh. Out of nowhere. So, uh, thank See? goodness. Thank you for knocking on the wood earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. We we were in pre-show. We had a, a fun pre-show with power outages, <laughs> tornado warnings. But not on uh, our side. We but just we kept said, losing our we said, No, we said, as soon as we do the show, everything is going to work great. And lo and awesome. behold, it has. So, James, what I is should. the Office of Tomorrow Mars? Well, we are a group of people, and, and hopefully more people will join, um, who is for the masses to go to space. Right now, unfortunately, uh, NASA, the SA, and other private firms, they're still catering only to the elite. And uh, we want to have everyone be able to go. And that's probably what's most important. You know, when, you, when, when, you, when they came here from Europe, 